Hello everyone, welcome to Middle Fantasy. I am your host Zach and today we're doing another book review. Today we're going to be talking all about Six of Crows by Leah Bardugo. And this is a book that has been suggested and recommended to me many, many countless times. And this is a book that when I tweeted that this was on my TBR, this was one where I got a lot of responses to. I'm like, oh my god, you're going to love it, this is going to be great. And um, we're, we're going to talk about this. I'm going to be very honest about my review about this. And uh, we'll get into it. I have a lot to say about it. A lot of good things, a lot of bad things. And this is an interesting one because I've never been recommended a book before that's been on my shelf for so long that we'll read it and we'll uh, find out. This is a safe to crack, much like a good heist. We have to do some prep work, do some advance reconnaissance. So why don't we go into it? So what is Six of Crows all about? Well, it follows your traditional heist story where we follow Kaz, who was kind of this criminal mastermind who has been tasked with breaking into an unbreakable prison. He has to assemble a crew. And not only that, but the stakes are really high because in this world, there is now this new types of like drug that if you take it, any magic user will become super powerful and super addicted to it. And if this falls into the wrong hands, the doctor, if he keeps making more of it, or if the wrong country gets a hold of him, well, bad things are going to happen. So he has to assemble this huge crack team of people and they have to pretty much go on a suicide mission to rescue this person. Again, it's a heist story. And uh, what did I think of it? I have to say, I kind of thought this book was really boring. And I already, uh, uh, I'm already, I know people are already booing me. They're turning this off, really. And this is a book that I really, really, really wanted to like. And um, I think one of the reasons why I didn't like this, and it's actually one of the reasons why I couldn't get into it, is for me personally, I love the heist genre. I love it in movies, I love it in books. It's one of my favorite genres. I've watched so many movies. And the problem with this book is that it follows every trope and every fantasy trope to a T to the point of where this book wasn't fun. Because if you watch any single heist movie and you understand the narrative and the plot and kind of the tropes that go into it, it follows it to a T to the point of where this book wasn't fun to read because I would flip ahead and I'd know exactly what was happening because I knew exactly in the narrative of the whole heist trope or the caper trope of what was happening. We have double crosses, we have the plan going wrong, we have plans backfiring, we have double triple crosses. You have a lot of the elements that if you watch a standard, you know, Ocean's Eleven, you know, Gone 60 Seconds, I could keep going on. Mistborn, um, another one, The Lies of Locke Lamore, actually more importantly, the, the sequel book. And you have like, when it comes to the heist genre, it's very tropey, but the exact same time when it comes to this book, Six of Crows, there's a lot of elements in it that I did like, but at the same time, it falls so much into the trappings of those tropes that it almost becomes a parody without it being a parody. And I mean, I won't say that it's bad because this book wasn't written for me. And I see that there's like a lot of great, like five star reviews for this on Goodreads. And the reason why this book didn't work for me again is personally for me, this book didn't have really anything new to offer because it was almost middle of the road in a way of it wasn't for me. But yet someone that doesn't really know that structure, someone that doesn't really understand the heist genre will really get a lot out of this book. Though, with that being said, there are a lot of things that I liked about this book. I think the character interactions and the character dialogue is so much fun, especially when they're getting into the whole heist stuff and you understand every character. Every character has a personality. We understand the brains, you know, with Kaz. We understand kind of his second in command with Inej. We understand Jesper. We understand Matthias. We understand all the other people, including like Nina. And I'm sure I'm missing people. Waylon. I know that I'm probably pronouncing these names wrong and I've only, I didn't listen to the audiobook, And that's kind of how they, they looked in my brain. Uh, but what I liked about this was that you have like these crew of people and the interactions are fun. There were a lot of moments in this that were actually really brutal. And I guess this is because this is supposed to be a YA fantasy series. And I've never understood the difference between fantasy and YA fantasy. I'm sure there probably is a distinct difference. I just consider it just fantasy. But there are a lot of moments in this that even I was reading it and it was like people like getting their necks snapped. There's people like exploding almost there's just a lot of brutality which for me 
I like the type of dumb stuff, especially in a book like this, where it's supposed to be gritty, though it falls into fantasy tropes. We have a lot of characters. We have the girl that likes to play with knives, the brutal crime boss, the person that started this rags to riches story where he's just brutal for the sake of being brutal because the world screwed him. Uh, you have the mage that really doesn't like being a mage, but at the exact same time, it's what makes her special. You have the person hiding their powers, and then you have the person's kind of the inside man, the person that's kind of torn between doing things for, you know, his culture and his pretty much his duty. And you have another thing where it's like, should I be doing this or should I be working with this crew of people? And again, those conflicts kind of like contradict a little bit for me and my personal reading experience. They, they do work, but also at the same time, it just, it, this was a book that didn't probably click with me, though I can see why, again, it works for a lot of people, and this is a book that, it wasn't poorly written, it's just for me as a person that likes the genre, it just, there wasn't anything that it brought to the table. Though the one thing that I'll say that I absolutely loved about this whole world is kind of, it, it's weird because I'm so used to reading like medieval fantasy. I love that this whole world has things like tanks and rifles and these whole weird like gambling dens and kind of like the inner workings of this whole universe is a lot of fun. I think the world building what is what really stands out, especially the locations that they go to. Those were some really fun things. And it was it's actually kind of quaint to see a, a rifle in a fantasy story or a tank or weirder things that when you really get down to the nitty gritty is stuff that could be adapted more into fantasy. And I see this a lot when it comes to more newer fantasy where they're kind of adding in those elements more than just the king and the queen and horses and what is what is this is this a pistol a flintlock of some sort we don't see that as much but here we see that front and center and the world is interesting because it's vast and has a lot of these interesting elements to it where you know the magic system in this is fun and interesting because again it falls into magic can solve all your problems but at the exact same time, this is the most important thing, it has a lot of consequences to it and all the magic people, it, it's, it's a little different in how it's kind of like they, they have it weaponized and it's almost a lot of warfare type of stuff, which again, I found that stuff to be interesting, but because we're going on a heist story, you, you get those elements. Though I think the biggest problem with the story, I gotta say, is without spoiling it, is that it, it starts off really good and then once you get into the whole heist stuff, it starts, personally for me, starts to like level out and like kind of fall because they start adding in these elements of potentially like, why is this character here? Why is this person here? Who is the main central antagonist other than just the prison? And that's stuff that they kind of answer. Uh, but for me, it's just, it, it wasn't enough. And it was, this is a book that I've been, I, I tried so hard to like it. I tried so hard and there are, again, there, there's things that I like. I think one of the things that I liked, again, the character stuff, especially their motivations for going on the thing, I thought a lot of them were interesting. Again, a little tropey, but I found them to be interesting, especially when it comes to, like, Jesper and Kaz and a lot of the other people, like Nina. Nina was, like, one of my favorite characters, the same as with Matthias in many ways. Like, I love the kind of dynamics that they have and kind of the back and forth of them just being a whole bunch of a-holes. It's like... Guardians of the Galaxy, but each person is broken in a much more different way and they in the end aren't kind of family They're just doing a job because they're gonna be paid a whole lot of money And that's the stuff that I love that they kind of explore especially when it comes to all the flashbacks I kind of liked how they incorporated them Especially when it comes to the different parts where you would follow someone's POV and as they're talking you go slowly in like it's pretty much like they don't slowly go into it. they pretty much like you get jet propelled into their backstory and you understand very slowly why they're doing the things that they do and why are they these horrible, awful people and kind of what makes them tick. At the same time, I kept forgetting that they're all supposed to be teenagers. I kept thinking they were in their mid twenties, but, but they're not like they're the best in the biz, but you know, it's, I guess the teen fantasy stuff of they're all teenagers solving this problem. And I was waiting for where's, where's the adult in the situation? But then again, I had to remember this is, oh, this is a, a teen YA story where the teenagers are the people that are going to be the brutes and they're going to solve all these problems either through magic, guns, swords, knives, or pretty much shoving papers down people's throats. And this is, again, a story that for me, I, yeah, I, I couldn't get into it. And I think that's kind of the shame. It's, 
you know, you want to review the book that you got, not the book that you wish you got. And this is one where I'm, I'm sorry, everyone that uh, recommended this to me. This is a book that just it didn't click. And especially I'm sure because it's supposed to be a duology, there's actually a sequel. And this book kind of ends on an interesting note. I'll, I'll put it that way. But there wasn't enough for me to keep continuing. And I see there's a lot of elements in here that, again, that I think I can see there's a lot of elements of, OK, this character is growing in a certain way of this person they're having interesting banter are they flirting with each other or do they hate each other and that's the stuff like okay that stuff's cool but also at the same time it's like a chocolate easter bunny like you see like you get this big book like this book is like thick but you take a bite out of it like an easter bunny and it's hollow in the inside just a little bit because of all the tropes and a lot of the cliches that it, it's, a, it's a shame because I want to like this book a lot more. If if I went back in time and I read this probably when I was 13, 14, before I really got into fantasy, I would have enjoyed it a whole lot more. And it probably would have a different appreciation, a different perspective. I know they're making it like a Netflix series. And I, you know what? I'll watch it because I think this would work really well visually. And this is something seeing the heist in this way and seeing if they change anything or really, you know, go more into the whole heist genre the caper genre and really see what happens with that i'd like to see this in a visual sense as a book it just it didn't work for me and i'm, I'm sorry would i recommend it yes to the right people i would if you've never watched a heist movie in your life or you have like a very basic understanding you'll really like this book if you're a person that likes the heist genre and you aren't bothered by um you know some tropes especially when it comes to just being very formulaic this will be very unenjoyable type of read characters were great the magic in the world was fantastic but there just for me wasn't that oomph that would get me to keep reading this book um but yeah again it's not for me but i'm sure it's all you know it's out there for a lot of people to like this and i might be wrong about this maybe this might be a book that i might revisit later on but for right now it's just it just doesn't have that oomph it doesn't have that energy it doesn't have you know the plan going wrong, you have to fix it through a different means. It just, for me, didn't have that. I'm, I'm sorry. Well, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you get your pitchforks and your torches ready. And I'm sure if you want to just take me out back and just, you know, give me some concrete shoes and throw me into my pool. I mean, don't, don't hate me for that. I'm sorry. Uh, but I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you all liked it, kinda. And if you enjoyed this video, maybe consider subscribing down below, giving me a like. I'd really appreciate that. Hey, I got some new social media stuff. I have an Instagram now. I have a Goodreads account. I have my Twitter. And I also have a Discord channel. So if you want to talk to me about books and stuff, yeah, check me out that way. We'll have links down below and there'll be nice little links right here uh, to check that stuff out. I'd love to engage with you guys. What did you like about this book? What did you hate about it? Are there things that I'm completely wrong about? I'd love to hear people's perspectives on this. But in the end, thanks all for watching this video. Well, everyone, like always, may your food and drink ever be tasteful, and may your books be filled with fantasy and adventure. Bye, everyone. See ya.